And, and so we can go so far as to say that anyone who is living a life dominated by the flesh, dominated by disobedience to the word of God, is not abiding in the teaching of Christ. They have set aside the word of God and they have raised up their own standard. They have set aside the law of Christ and they have established their own law. They've made a standard they feel comfortable meeting. Now understand, people like this are a danger to persevering in the truth. We don't look at these people as harmless, misguided people in the church. Those who do these things have an aim and an objective, and it is to draw those who are in the truth away from the truth to follow after them, to embrace their lies. They want you to follow them rather than Christ. They're like the false teachers in Galatians chapter 4. Verse 17, Paul said, they eagerly seek you, not commendably, but they wish to shut you out so that you will seek them. They're not interested in you seeking Christ. They want you to follow them. And so they seek you out for the purpose of drawing you into their orbit and then their goal is to systematically cut you off from other people who do know the truth, who believe the truth. What do we do with people like this? Well, verse eight, 2 John eight, watch yourselves that you do not lose what we have accomplished, but that you may receive a full reward. Here's the first thing you do when you see somebody like this, when that alarm bell starts going off in your soul, be on guard. Watch yourself, watch out, danger, danger, danger. Defenses go up. Because people like this threaten to destroy the work that God has accomplished among the people of God. John here talks about not losing what we have accomplished but receiving a full reward. And there I don't think John means that, that we could not receive salvation. That's not what he's saying. But what he's saying is when you let false brothers, false sisters, false teachers have influence in the church, they damage the ministry and they jeopardize your faithfulness to Christ. And at the end, you will lose your reward because you have not been as faithful as God called you to be. Paul describes this concept in 1 Corinthians 3. 1 Corinthians 3:14. If any man's work which he has built on it, the foundation which is Christ, remains, he will receive a reward. If any man's work is burned up, he will suffer loss. But he himself will be saved, yet so as through fire. Now here what Paul is saying is you can be saved, but you get to heaven smelling like smoke. And everything you did in your life to serve Christ amounts to a pile of ash. No reward. You forfeit it because you weren't faithful to the truth. You don't want that, brothers and sisters. I don't want that. I don't want to spend all of this energy and all of this time ministering to the people of God and get to the end and find out I didn't receive a full reward because I wandered away from the truth. We want our work to remain. We want it to abide. We want it to have eternal impact and eternal value so that we receive a reward from God for our faithful service that we have done through his grace and by his power. But deceivers don't want you to have that full reward. They come along and, and, and they try to distract you. They try to misdirect you. They try to confuse you. To corrupt your ministry. To corrupt the church. And John says that you've got to watch out that that doesn't happen. Because there are going to be people that come in that seek to do that. And so we must be vigilant as a church and as members of the church. 